managing housing in a sustainable way. How can that be done? Which specific measures can we undertake to increase the sustainability of dwellings? Now, in this lecture, we will address this question primarily from the perspective of different sustainable, sustainable housing management ambition levels. These ambition levels can be achieved through various combinations of techniques. We distinguish between five ambition levels. Level zero is the absolute minimum. On this level, the focus is on maintaining the dwelling in its current state. For example, by painting regularly, you will prevent wooden elements of the building from decay and avert the costly replacement of these elements. At level zero, the dwelling is not made more energy efficient. The standard Dutch row house with energy label G will still have that label even when properly maintained. We therefore use this level as a reference. It is the bare minimum that needs to be done. At level one, the objective is to increase the energy efficiency of existing buildings. Such measures include double glazing, wall, roof and floor insulation and replacement of the central heating boiler or other heating systems by a more energy efficient model. And as you can imagine, a level one refurbishment is not sufficient to reduce energy consumption to zero, but it will reduce energy costs considerably. For example, from energy label G to energy label C. Level two aims to achieve the greatest possible reduction of the need for energy. And one way of achieving this is by adding installations that generate renewable energy, such as solar panels or energy efficient installations that make optimal use of residual heat and use that again for electricity production. And these measures we call active measures. Active interventions work best in dwellings that reduce energy demand as much as possible by the way they are constructed or refurbished. These measures involve strict insula insulation and additional requirements such as a high level of air tightness in the building. And in addition, windows, walls, roofs and floors can be designed or adapted to collect, store and distribute solar energy in the form of heat in winter and to cast off solar heat in summer. We call these measures passive measures. Well, to reach the highest possible level of energy reduction, a combination of active and passive measures is needed. And this level of energy efficiency can be achieved in new housing construction, but it is also possible by refurbishing existing dwellings. Level two will create dwellings that almost need no additional energy. Level three involves high-end renovations, such as the pre allogé house that is shown here. At this level, the dwelling is improved in such a way that over the course of a year, the dwelling produces, produces at least as much energy as the occupant consumes on average. Let's have a closer look at level three. At this level, the affordability of technical measures is key. Affordability can be reached through innovative payment arrangements where the current amount of the energy bill is invested in the renovation. And as a result, the occupants pay the same as they did before. The rent will be higher, but the energy bill will be lower. And in this way, high-end sustainable housing investments can still be affordable for residents and financially attractive for the landlord. We call this net zero energy solutions. 
While affordable net zero energy solutions can be achieved for a single home, it is hard to develop a viable business case for only one dwelling. And to make these high level refurbishments cost effective, product innovation, industrialization and increase in scale is needed. The net zero energy approach is therefore mainly suited for the construction or the refurbishment of series of dwellings. In the Netherlands, landlords and construction industry partners have established a program called the Accelerator to meet these requirements. And together, these parties want to refurbish tens of thousands of dwellings. And one example of that program is shown here. Level 4 introduces two interrelated perspectives to sustainable housing management. The, so the, so the social perspective and the neighborhood perspective. Considerations for this level go beyond dwellings alone. The approach considers all energy and financial flows in the neighborhood and links them to existing social needs to create a new business case. The ambition of energy-friendly renovation serves as a driving force to achieve other objectives in the neighborhood. For example, by using residual heat from nearby factories, by sharing facilities such as windmills or biomass installations, solar park, cars and very Dutch bikes. Engaging residents in sustainable housing management can be the starting point for other activities that increase social cohesion and sustainability and to create more attractive neighborhoods. By adopting a perspective that goes beyond the individual dwelling, neighborhoods can be created that might well be able to produce more energy than they consume. To summarize, the various ambition levels... Hmm, level 0 maintains the original quality of the dwelling. On level 1, a number of energy-saving measures are carried out. On level 2, the greatest possible reduction in energy consumption is achieved. On level 3 and 4, other elements are introduced. For level 3, the, the measures applied must be financially attractive for residents as well as for the landlord and the construction industry parties. Level 3 thus includes a sound business model. Level 4 builds on that by going beyond the level of the individual dwelling and by focusing on the neighborhood level and including a social perspective. Ambition level 4 is not the final station for sustainable housing management. It is only a stepping stone towards the next level, the transition from a linear take, make, use and dispose economy towards a circular economy where energy is generated and used in a sustainable way and resources are continually reused. A change towards a circular economy in housing management is paramount. The natural resources we need to build, maintain and refurbish our homes are getting scarcer. And as a result, resources, resource prices are increasing and becoming more volatile. In addition, we deplete our national resources and pollute our environment because we mainly dispose our waste and only reuse a tiny fraction. Proper maintenance and ambition level zero remains at the core of sustainable housing management. The circular economy builds on the product innovations, 
industrialization and cost effectiveness embedded in level three and the social and neighborhood perspective in level four. And the circular economy introduces a new perspective, closing loops by reusing, remanufacturing and recycling our buildings and the materials and components in these buildings. The circular economy perspective compels us to look differently at our built environment and our, at our dwellings, not, at not as future waste, but as valuable warehouses of materials and components that can be reused, remanufactured and recycled. Components such as kitchens, central heating boilers, roofs, bathrooms and facades. At Delft University of Technology, we are fully aware of the new challenges of the circular economy perspective for sustainable housing management and are developing new technical solutions, supply chain systems, financial and economic models together with our industry partners to meet these challenges.